Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the uh, terrific Tuesday, the May 5th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much, much more important than that. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. And, of course, happy Cinco de Mayo. This is the type of corona that you do want to have in your possession. Now, we're not going to open it and drink it now, but I guarantee you a little later on, we'll be popping the Coronas out there. But in the meantime, let's get to these markets. Let's go see what's going on right now. We've got all the indices in the green. You've got the Dow up 314 points, about one and three tenths percent. S&P is up one and a half percent, 45 points. NASDAQ 100, one and seven tenths percent. Russell's up two percent. Semis are up two and a half percent. So we've got some movement to the upside. We're going to go see what everything is trading into. You've got gold off three bucks, silver's up uh, 30 cents. Way to move out there, 2%. Light sweet crude is up four bucks, 20% to the upside. Uh, Treasury bonds, basically, the, the 30 year is back eight ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside. It is the googly one. It's up 41 bucks, trading out at 1364. Shopify's up $39. She is trading out at 698. Wayfair up 32 bucks. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals up 29. So some big movers. The Shakers are Transdigion Group down 22. Uh, Itron Inc. is off 11. Martin Marietta is down down nine booking holdings down six although that's not a big deal there so plenty to look at of course i want to look at what you want to look at no requests so far so let's get right to what are the indices doing out here what are they doing let's go take a look at our our uh, market profiles for our four equity futures contracts and so here's what we know. We know that price has made it up to the top of those profiles the top of the profiles for the es and the nq Inside the Russell 2000, the very right-hand side, it's above the top of its box. Now, the top of the profile is where sellers are at. So it is no surprise that so far, the high inside the ES Mini is uh, 2889.50. And the uh, TAS, top of that market profile is 2890, let me 2890.75. you got to love that. 2889.50 versus 2890.50. Man, what a beautiful thing. So prices run right up into resistance. And here's where the sellers, we're seeing the sellers try to um, flex their muscles a bit. We're going to try to figure out whether they're able to flex their muscles or are they just simply able to push price down to support. So we'll go take a look at those levels on the short-term time frame. Inside the NQ, the same pattern. The top of its profile is 89.95. The high today, 89.98. We're trading just below that. So again, we know where the sellers are located. The question is, do buyers have the ability to um, overrun those? sellers. I don't know the answer. We'll be able to make a educated 
um, not guess, but an educated conclusion based upon whether or not the uh, the sellers can break the short-term backs of buyers out there by taking a look at the breakout levels. Now, in the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it has not made its way up to the top. And the top there is 24,198. The high today so far is 20. Well, let me make sure I get it. It is 24057. And the Russell 2000 price is above the top of that profile. That is 1254. Now, here's the interesting thing. Well, let's do this here. Let, let, I can't say interesting, but let me do this. Do what, Steve-O? Here's the four different time frames for each of the futures. Well, not, I'm just going to do the ES, the, the Dow, and the NQ out here. But the So if we take a look at the ES mini, you can see on the upper left-hand corner, there is your... There's your resistance level that price is traded into on a daily basis. On a weekly basis, price is held the bottom of that profile. So 27.79 is a real key level on a weekly basis that, quite frankly, the ES Mini must close below to suggest that there's some kind of a top in here. Otherwise, from a weekly profile perspective, uh, support is held. Now, on a monthly profile, we just began a new month. I don't have to tell you that. It's really not just today. It happened on May 1st. But there is a brand new monthly profile, and support there is 26.58. The ES Mini. The ES Mini is trading also into the resistance of the top of its quarterly profile out here, which is measured at 28.83. So that's what the ES Mini is looking like out here. So if, this is helpful to us, if uh, buyers are able to overcome resistance on the uh, ES Mini, the daily profile out here. Um, you could easily see a run up to 3143. That would be the center of its bearish structured monthly profile. Now, obviously, I'm saying it's going to run up there right away, but that would be that would be the next profile target because the profile target for the weekly base is up at 3264. So that's a possibility. Market has to prove itself. It hasn't proven itself just yet. Let's go take a look at the NQ out here. Now, the NQ on the daily, you can see price running right up into the top of its resistance level, the top of its profile. No new weekly profile out here. That's been in place for over a month. The top of its profile is 97.48. That's where resistance would be. Price is above the top of the quarterly profile and inside the NQ. All you see up here is resistance is a nice little rising trend line. And that is contained price out here. So the NQ, the only hope, not the only hope, but the primary hope for bears would be that price is unable to close above 89.95.80 come day's end. If we take a look at the Dow out here, this is the weak link, a weak link. This also has formed a new monthly profile. And so you've got the bottom of that profile is at 24,870, and the top of the daily is 24,198. That is really the range, I would say, of the make it or break it type category out here. Now, the, one, it, the, the Dow is still, when I say it's the weak one, here, just take a look at the trend lines. These trend lines, the Dow is going to be in the upper left-hand corner. And so what price has been unable to do inside the Dow has been able, where it's found resistance, is at the 2016 trend line. So start from the bottom of that all the way up to the uh, low that we saw in December of 2018 out here. And you can see that that is that secondary trend line level. Not the case, obviously, inside the S&P, not the case inside the NASDAQ, but inside the Russell, here's the real weak one. It hasn't been able to really close above its March of 09 trend line. And here we've just simply connected the lows from 2016 out here. We take a look at the spot volatility index before we go to a uh, breakout here, well below the 50-day exponential moving average. That exponential moving average level is 40, 43, really in order to get real traction to the downside in the markets, you're going to need to see that spot volatility next trade above that level. See Broach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner.
banner to profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we'll come back to the markets. Let's go to our first request out here. This is from inside the Tiger's Den. The request is to take a look at the uh, GLD. So we'll do that. But before we do that out there, what I want to do, because that is the ETF for uh, gold, is really just take a look at the uh, picture of uh, Goldilocks. So let's go take a look at what we do know. We take a look at gold. Let's start by taking a look at the primary trading range boundary lines out here. And here on this chart that we're taking a look at, the green lines, this is, by the way, this is a weekly time frame chart we're looking at, but presented on it are both the weekly, which are in green, and the monthly, which are in red, horizontal trading ranges. Now, what is a horizontal trading range? What we do, or what I do out here, this is uh, really coming from Bud Ross, but it's slightly different than his work out here. Um, what I've, I've, and I've automated the process. So I'm taking all of this data right now that's on this chart, the weekly chart. And this is just take me back into the 2009 time frame. And what the system does is it goes out and identifies the largest number of opens or closes. So we're looking at only the bodies of the candle. It doesn't matter whether it's an open or a close. And when it finds that, it then looks for the second largest congregation, congestion area of opens and closes. And that uh, establishes our trading range. And then once you have that dollar value, you just simply add it to the top and to the bottom. So a monthly closing candle is obviously, go not obviously, but most of the times is going to look different than a weekly, unless the month ends on a Friday. And then dailies are obviously going to be different out here. And that's why the, the levels are, are, are different. On this weekly chart, what we can see here is gold has just been consolidating sideways in between its weekly horizontal trading range levels on a closing basis. And that is between the areas of 1695 and 1762. And we've been inside this range out here uh, ever since the week of the week that began uh, April the 6th. So over a month now of just trading sideways. So JP in the uh, Tiger's Den, gold is just simply trading sideways. 
inside that range out there. So that's the first thing that we know. What, what else do we know about uh, Goldilocks? Well, we know that uh, today it's trading uh, slightly lower in terms of dollars, higher in terms of euros, lower in terms of yen, and uh, slightly lower in terms of pounds. So it's not like there's any synergy here for either buying or selling in gold going across the globe makes sense that we would see in essence very little movement which is in fact what we have what else do we know about gold when well, we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for goldilocks here's what we know it formed a td setup nine count high out there did that on bar number eight price been uh, struggling it's been going back and forth between the bottom of that profile at 1706 if it does give way so there's topping very very solid topping pattern that is out here if it does give way price should pull back to 1595.20 1595.20 would be its breakout level. Now, the, what I'm going to do here, JP, is I'll pull over GLD. And GLD does not have the exact same patterns out there. So you'll see inside of GLD, I do not have a TD9 count which means if I were to use this, I would be missing a very important, well, several things. I don't have a TD9 count top. I don't have the breakout level out here to rely upon. So in trading the GLD, really important to take a look at the underlying instrument, and that would be the gold contract itself out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to gold, what it's doing. And uh, and if not, well, then tell me how else it is that I can help you. But just simply sideways consolidation type action. Hope that helps. Now, let's go back to the uh, futures contracts out here because, as we were pointing out, Jay was asking for a wish, and that wish was that um, he got a six pack of Corona that would sink the markets. And so you, you may get that wish out here uh, because price has certainly run into. Uh, so we're looking at the counter trend rally ending. Well, then the ES and the NQ have done its job. But we did say that the Russell 2000 is the one that is trading above the top of its profile. And so in essence, we need to take a look, or I think we should take a look at kind of the strong dog out here, strong with regard to trading above resistance levels. So let's do that. And in doing that, well, first I have to change over to take a look at those charts. Thought I thought it was there. Sorry, just a slight little delay, but uh, we're getting it back here quickly. So the first thing we're going to look at is going to be the 30 minute time frame out here again. Price has not resistance. We know the resistance is over in the ES and the NQ. But what's going on in the short-term basis inside the Russell 2000? I'm glad you asked me that. Well, here's what we can see. We can see that two things were going on. Price was moving higher as it made its high, doing so with less relative energy. That triggered the Rhodes Momentum indicator signal. It actually triggered on bar number seven. Bar number eight was the high of this um, session so to speak and this did have a confirmed td9 count so now you've got and by the way bar number eight was a dark cloud cover bearish reversal candle so now we know about the russell 2000 because even though on a short-term basis it's given us a very valid topping signal granted price above the top of the profile so can we learn from this that uh, and I'll pull over the other 30-minute time frame charts, by the way, for the ES and the NQ. But could we possibly get, Jay, an early warning signal that would come from the Russell 2000, not the ES and the NQ out here? And what I mean by that is because of the valid TD9 count top that we have, if the Russell 2000 is able to close below 1270.20, and granted, at 1258.10, there's another breakout level. But if it can close below 1270.20, would that be signaling to us the possible change in trend? And it may be. Look, if we're going to see a change in trend in the marketplace, one thing is for sure. If the top was in, possibility. Nothing confirmed just yet. If the top was in, then what we will see as markets move lower is we will see the markets break through these breakout levels, these TD nine count support areas. So 1270.20 is the level that I'd be watching inside the Russell 2000. Granted, there's also support on its 30 minute time frame, which is 1279.50, and that's the bottom of its bullish structured profile. Now, what that's going to tell you is if you see a close below 1279.50, that almost guarantees although there's no guarantee out here so i'm using that as a i don't know metaphoric type language but it, it certainly increases the probability we're going to see at least a test of 127020 now here's the thing if 12 if we do see price move to 127020 and price holds well then the weak link out here potential weak link the russell 2000 has not given you any kind of sell signal whatsoever in fact it's just a topping pattern 
the either the TD9 count or the Rosemontum indicator, just with the ability to push price down to support. So watch that 127020 level. Now, the reason why I think the Russell's important to take a look at not that the others aren't, is because it's likely going to be the first one that would get down to that support area and tell us whether or not this is right now just a, uh, hey, we got up to resistance, there were snipers up there, we're going to reload our ammo, and we're going to take another run for them, just like uh, the Russell was able to do. Well, when we take a look at the ES Mini out here, it has quite a ways to go before it would get to its breakout area. And if it closed below that, by the way, that breakout area is 2847, that could be then signaling to us that, in fact, Jay, you were given that gift. You were given the gift of a uh, market starting to move lower because price got up to resistance, or at a minimum, it says what we're in a consolidation in between the market profiles out there. But the ES Mini, to give you that confirmed sell signal out here, would need to close, in my opinion, would need, you need to see it close below 2847, at least short term support failing. Now, there is no topping signal here inside the ES Mini. And that makes me say, on a 30-minute time frame, makes me say, hmm, something to think about. Because you see, it could have been bar number eight or the bar following bar number one that identified the top on a 30-minute basis. And we don't have that. And you know what that tells Stevie? The ES Mini is going to make another run for the top of that profile. Maybe even take it out. We get that same message inside the NQ for its 30-minute time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our first email question. Again, you can send me an email, Steve, at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Uh, uh, first email coming from Brent in Martinez, California. And uh, Brent wants us to go ahead and take a look at uh, Light Sweet Crude. Uh, Brent goes, hey, I'll read his, I'll read his email because you love it. Makes me smile. Is the move in oil today doing anything to blow your skirt up? You know how I like to use that phrase. Uh, I'd appreciate your analysis. I seem to recall number around 22 as a level of a diagonal trend line resistance, which is right, uh, which if right has been surpassed today. Thanks as always, and uh, thanks for writing in, uh, Brent. And yes, you're you're exactly right. The uh, the you're looking at the. I'll just expand this out here. We're taking a look at the uh, June contract, and in the June contract, folks, I have a couple of different tools that are present. I've got a little trend line set of tools out here, and you can see one of the trend lines that Brent is referring to. That price got above in the bottom of that daily profile. Remember, the profile formed above price, which generally is a bearish indication. Price is above the trend line and it's traded into the center of that box now, which is about 25.26. Hasn't hit it exactly, but it is trading above 22.91. And it's back inside that profile range. And what this is suggesting to us, Brent, is that price will go and tag the uh, top of that box, the top of that profile, 27.60. And if it were to close above the top of the profile, it would be signaling to us a change in trend inside of light sweet crude. So when we go ahead and we shrink this down, you're also going to see how light sweet crude is trading all the way out through 2022. Um, and uh, that takes us to January of 2022. And that contract is currently priced at uh, $35.35. Now, if we take a look at my other time frame chart, so, well, my, I'm sorry. If we bring over my other daily time frame chart here for light sweet crude, what we're going to see is this did form a TD9 count bottom. So that was the low that it put in using the TD9 count bottom. Now, the benefit there is that pattern then gives us a real resistance level, which is 3450. This also confirmed even the price, a TD9 count bottom. And then what we had take place about four days ago, four or five days ago, was on the trading session of uh, April 29th out here. You had the bullish reversal candle to confirm the Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So now what Lightspeed Crude actually has is two bottoming patterns out here. And this chart would say that price is headed to 34.50. That's the next resistance. So our target here, you'd have to say in the June contract, is going to be between 27.60 and that, uh, and if price can get over overcome that level, then we'd be looking at a um, uh, a move up to the 3450 area. Today will be bar number four of a potential TD9 count pattern to the upside, but that's got um, you know another four or five days before that pattern could actually confirm out there. So that's what I see going on in, in light sweet crude. Now, if we take a look at a weekly time frame out here for light sweet crude, uh, this is showing. Um, a road's momentum indicator bottom on a weekly basis. And that was last week's hammer candle that formed that uh, generated that signal. This Brent on a weekly basis is telling you and I that price wants to run up to the Stevie's red line. And that's in the 29 ish type area on the print right now. It says 29.24. That level will go up as price moves higher out here. But it's in that $29 area. A close above that on a weekly basis would also suggest a change in trend. So that would be another uh, level to watch because just move, excuse me, moving up into Stevie's red line and rejecting that would say this was nothing more than a counter trend rally. So the weekly chart is going to be important to take a look at. Uh, let's just do the uh, 30 minute time frame out here for light sweet crude. What do we have? Do we have anything? And I got zip. I've got nada. Now, I'm sure there's an A to B equal CD pattern here. Yeah, I mean, you could draw a number of them. And so we did get a bearish reversal candle, but price is, um, price is just beginning to trade below Stevie's green line. So on a short-term basis, price could pull back anywhere between 2226, 2277, and 2298. And nothing would be broken with regard to what we just took a look at on the bigger picture out there. That would be a short term uh, support. But I can't say I have a really great feel that that's really what the outcome is going to be at this stage of the game out there. So, Brent, I hope that helps you out with regard to light, sweet, crude out there. And thanks for writing in. Um, no other requests at this stage of the uh, game out there so let's go take a look at oh, oh i know what i was going to do back to the general markets out here so i'm going to come back to the general markets 
Give me a moment. We're back at the uh, profile level. And what we want to do, so we were taking a look at really using the Russell 2000s, 30-minute time frame, as a gauge to help us understand what the intention of the market is. Well, in the case of the NQ, we're right now back to the top of its uh, profile out there. And inside the NQ, what we really need to do is go take a look at the top six holdings that represent a substantial portion of the indice. So let's go take a look at Microsoft. That is number one. I don't know the weighting off the top of my head, but I do know it's number one waiting. Now, in the case of Microsoft, this had a confirmed Gartley sell pattern, a confirmed TD9 count, confirmed because it did form that Three River Evening Star. But remember, sellers, when you get a topping signal, what we don't know, but what we want to be able to identify is where are the support levels? Can price take out support? Well, in the case of Microsoft, the answer was no. Price pushed down to support, and that is Stevie's green line. So that level is held. We did say a one-hit wonder. This was on the trading session of uh, April the 28th. But all price was able to do there is get back to the top of its uh, profile. So no level of support has held. Even though this Gartley sell pattern now goes away with price, assuming that price is going to close above the high of this evening star, which is... Um, 180, even Steven, and we're at 182. In fact, I'm just simply going to take that off the pattern, the, the pallet right now. What it is doing, though, it is moving into wave number seven. That is letter G on my screen out here. So there is another potential topping signal inside of Microsoft, but it must close below first Stevie's green line two sessions in a row, and then below the bottom of the profile, 164.07, and then it must take out 157.58, its most recent breakout level, to confirm some type of change in trend. But as we speak right now, Microsoft does have a valid topping signal, but that can't be confirmed until we see a lower high, meaning wave number seven could extend tomorrow or the next day indefinitely until there is a lower high. So potential, but also two topping signals inside of Microsoft have failed out there. Let's go take a look at the number two weighted component inside the NDX 100. Well, that is Apple. If we take a look at Apple, this too confirmed a Gartley sell pattern. It did it a few days ago when it generated that shooting star candle. Shooting star candles typically either work or they don't. What I mean work is that you usually see follow through the very next day. Now, this is the May 1st shooting star. We did not get follow through yesterday. Doesn't mean that it is a failed candlestick, but today is saying, oh, Steve-O, it may be a failed candlestick because price right now is trading above the top. That is 299 even Steven. We're at 299.57. If, in fact, the uh, uh, Apple closes above 299 even Steven, where it's trading right now, this will have a failed Gartley sell signal. We'll just go ahead and get rid of it because I can always draw that back in. There's no other topping signal. Not that wave number six, letter F, can't be it, but this would be saying Apple wants to trade up to 324.65, where it had broken down. Those two things, we'll go take a look at Amazon next, but those two things, the number one, number two weighting inside the NDX 100, can certainly pull its market higher. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. Investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 351, S&P 49 points. So let's go back and take a look at the, uh, the remaining four constituents inside the NDX 100. Amazon is, I believe, the third weighted structure inside there. Now, in the case of Amazon, it has uh, a couple of different topping patterns. It's got our butterfly cell. Now, that butterfly cell pattern was confirmed when we saw the gap to the downside. This was on May Day, on May the 1st out here. Now, price has broken one level of support, and that would be Stevie's Green Line. That's a 2393 out there, 2393. This also confirmed a Rhodes Wintum indicator top. But price needs to first close below the bottom of its daily profile out here. So 2239 is the number to watch, 2239.33 to be exact out there. If, in fact, Amazon were to close below that, then you'd be looking for a run back to its breakout area at 1930. But it's got a topping pattern, but hasn't been able to break any real key levels of support out here. Well, the first level, but not the second level. So watch the 2239. So we'd have to say that um, Microsoft and Apple are both bullish, and Amazon we'd have to classify this as neutral, even though it's got a topping pattern because it hasn't taken out the bottom of that profile. At least that is how I would view things and I would look at it. If we take a look at the googly one out here, let's go see what it has. It has Zippo, Nada, Zilch when it comes to a topping pattern. There's a Gartley cell possibility. Oh, 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 I take this back. I take this back. I take it back. My apology. It did have a Gartley cell pattern. I'd already erased that. My, my apology. And, and that pattern had completed when we had this little bear sash candle a couple of days ago. However, prices trading above the resistance established by that bear sash candle. So that pattern, too, has gone away. Of course, at the end of the day, if price closes below the resistance level, then that would not be the case. But at 144 in the afternoon, price is above that. And what Google is suggesting to you and I is that it wants to move up into the 1403 level. That's its 1 to 2, A to B equals CD. So this did have a Gartley sell pattern. At this stage right now, as of 144 in the afternoon, that's been violated. And if uh, Google closes right here, it's suggesting that it wants higher price, too. So we've got... And uh, here's a signal coming from inside the QQQ series. And we do know that where these sellers are sitting at at the top of that profile. But look at the strength 
inside of the uh, weighted um, stocks inside of the NDX 100. And it makes you kind of believe, makes you kind of believe, boys, that is that not just the greatest grammar uh, on the planet Earth? Yeah, I agree with you. It is now. Oh, by the way, Brent, I, I forgot to answer your question. Yes, it did blow my skirt up, but it's Cinco de Mayo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what that means. But here's what we do know about Facebook out here. Do we have a topping pattern in Facebook? And the answer here is we do not. Granted, in the case of Facebook, price is pressing into the top of its profile out here. It's a bullish structured profile. Um, it's right around where price is trading right now. But that alone, that's just resistance. It's not a topping pattern out here. There's an A to B equals CD. The one to two A to B equals CD would get us up into the 218.49 level. So if price can close above this profile out here, that would become its target. But nothing bearish when we take a look at the chart for Facebook. So now that covers five of the top six, uh, you double up on Google for the two shares that it has out there. And then that leaves us with the last one. Yeah, that was Facebook. Um, that, did I say something else? But it was Facebook. Uh, G count Steve off the bottom in Facebook. Let's see here. Let's see what does Stevie have? I believe that went away. If we come off of the bottom. Uh, yeah, so that went away with today's higher high, Peter. So wave uh, letter G, wave number seven, that would have taken place on, let me see. So great question. Thanks for asking. Let me get the cross here. So what Peter was looking for is he saw wave number seven, and that was on April 30th. But the high on April 30th, let me get that for you. Well, let me try to get that for you. <laughs> um, if there's a will, there's a way. 209.69 is the uh, is the number and price traded just above it so it negated that wave number seven pattern which was why i had turned it off so i didn't want to confuse anybody so no 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 so so um that's the nice thing about having this, this the tools automated so because that way i don't have to worry about missing something you know, out there, it's pretty. It's really easy to do, uh, um, unless you've got uh, Basil's eagle eye. I don't have Basil's eagle eye, uh, but price in the case of uh, Facebook is up at a, a resistance, but no topping pattern that we have in the case of Facebook. It did have wave number seven, but that's now been violated. So no topping signal at all inside of uh, Facebook. Let's go to Intel to round out, which is more than 50 percent, I believe, of the weightings. And we combine all of these. Now, in the case of Intel, it does maintain its currently sell pattern. And now what it hasn't done, it has not broken through its second key level of support. It's right now trading, trying to trade back into Stevie's green line. In fact, it is. It's testing that level in the 59.15 area. But price would have to close above. It has to close above the high at 62.13 in order to negate the Gartley sell pattern. Its pattern was confirmed when we saw the uh, gap to the downside about a half a dozen trading sessions ago. And we saw one a couple, three days ago as well. So it's got doble gi confirmation out here. So the weakest of all of the top six inside the uh, NDX 100, well, it's only one that's weak, right? It's Intel. It's the only one that still has a confirmed sell signal out there. So, um, you know, boy, you, 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 when I start, and, and then when we go back to the shorter term time frame charts inside the equity futures area, and I'll pull this up. So here's the 30 minute chart. I think I just posted it real quickly as we were going to break here. You take a look at this 30 minute time frame, no topping signal at all out here. Uh, there was a chance earlier this morning around 10, 1030. Uh, that did not uh, come to fruition because there was a TD nine count pattern here. Prices got it's above all resistance, even on the 30 minute time frame out here. So the fact of the matter is the NQ, based on what we've looked at, it should not surprise us. If, in fact, it's able to close above the top of that uh, profile level, and that is uh, 89.95. So I guess my would caution firing away at the uh, short side inside the NQ right now. Just looking at the makeup and we can take a look at. Well, here I know I can take a look at. I think I can. Do I have it up? Well, I'll. I'll uh, let me get let me get this started here. I'm going to go to my shortest term time frame uh, TAS market profile. 
So give me a second here. I'm going to uh, pull this up on the uh, screen for us. And when I say shortest time frame, we're looking at a 30-minute time frame. So if there were, there was, there will be um, some type of top on a 30-minute time frame, we'd want to see some type of bearish crossover. And we just don't have that. Right now, using this time frame, there's 196 constituents. Oh, I'm in the S&P. My apology. We were taking a look at Give me a second here to, to change over to that. There we go. Let me get this. Okay. So here inside the NDX 100, 53 of the components on their 30 minute time frame are trading above the top of their box and only eight below the bottom. Kind of get the gist here? It looks pretty darn bullish, at least as of 1.50 in the afternoon. So, Jay, maybe you're not going to get that Corona wish whatsoever. But if you were down here, I'd serve you Coronas until the cows come home. And if the cows came home, we'd make a lot of money because of the shortage of beef. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, an essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So a couple of quick questions that have uh, come in here. One is a question of uh, where is Microsoft uh, headed to and can it reach 190 by Friday? Now, that I don't know. But here with regard to Microsoft, there's an A to B equals CD. Prices traded up in the one to one price projection, 182.62. The one to 1.272 was 191.39. You're looking at can it trade up into the high basically of February 11th. At this stage here, we don't have anything to suggest otherwise. 
it should trade higher. Um, whether that it is up into the 190 area by Friday, that that I can't say. But there's no no real topping. There's no topping signal whatsoever so far inside of Microsoft. Mike uh, S wanted to take a look at the GDX, so let's go take a look at that here quickly. So the GDX traded higher this uh, trading higher today into the top of its uh, daily profile. Uh, daily profile somewhere just slightly above where we're trading right now. I can't see. I think it's 34.71. We're at 34.60 right now. Here's the thing, Mike, that I would say to be careful of. What today's high triggered inside the GDX is a potential Rhodes momentum indicator top out here. Now, the last time that we saw the Rhodes momentum indicator top back here on September 4th, that certainly led to a decline and then a real consolidation sideways. So what you're going to want to watch if you're inside the GDX is until you get out, you're up at resistance on a daily basis. But uh, if you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would tell you you're going to see a retracement either 32.15 or down to 2437 out there. So that's what I would be uh, looking for. The last question coming in, coming in from Hector and the fuel injectors. And yes, Hector, uh, happy Cinco de Mayo to you as well. And uh, he says, so the VIX is the king. And the VIX is the king out here. You always want to take a look at it. Understand where is it trading in relationship to that 50-day exponential moving average, which right now is printing at 4042. And what's the reason that you want to do that? Well, generally speaking, let's go to Steve's generally speaking chart. That's this right here. When the spot volatility is below the 50-day exponential moving average, the S&P wants to move sideways to higher. And when it's above, those would be the uh, yellow boxes. The S&P wants to move sideways to lower. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Two great hours are up next. Enjoy your Cinco de Mayo celebration. And I look forward to seeing you on May 6th. Take care.